This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Nihongo Hanashimasu ka? Nihongo Hanashimasen? All right, I'm standing here with Greg. Greg from Nashua, who has uh, you have a, a concern about some things that are going on nationally. That uh, well, tell me what you would. I'd never heard this concept before, but go ahead. Oh well, a lot of people recently in the libertarian area uh, who have been reading up on the NDAA 2012, the act that kind of expands upon the Patriot Act uh, that uh, says the government is allowed to uh, detain citizens without a trial for a very long time. Some people are in the know about this, uh, but what uh, isn't as widely known is uh, another provision in that same act that uh, puts a trade embargo on uh, Iran and uh, if we if history repeats itself um, there was a trade embargo on Iraq before uh, we invaded them uh, before it became kind of uh, out out there that we we're gonna invade them there was a, a setup a preliminary setup to that invasion and so uh, if we were on the same timeline um, we we're probably going to go to war with Iran in 2013 and uh, there was something else that you had indicated about the, I think it was about the uh, the NDA or the Iraq Iran situation that I had not thought of before. Was there, there something else too that was? Oh well, um, well the fact that uh, I, I don't know exactly what you're talking about there, but uh, but the thing is, um, these things are kind of set up beforehand, and I guess. Uh, it's not, there's no media coverage on the NDAA really, you know, uh, mainstream. And, um, and then even, you know, even this one provision with the embargo uh, isn't really out there. And then the consequences of it are you have to really think through and follow history. And so this stuff is, is hidden out in the open. It really is hidden out in the open. If you go to Wikipedia, you can see this, the summary of this provision. Um, and so you can kind of predict that, you know, buy oil, oil prices are going to go up, um, you know, expect, um, you know, this to be a way to stop the inflation. This is connected to inflation. Um, uh, we force these countries to use the so-called American petro dollar. Uh, we force them to sell the barrels of oil in dollars. Um, and yeah, and that would be another indication if Iran were trying to move away from the dollar, that would be an indication that they are getting closer to oh, being killed. <laughs> yes, a couple years ago there was a couple articles about um, basically Navy SEALs cutting uh, the telecommunication wires to Iran for the internet. That same uh, time period, that week, uh, was also when the Iranian oil bourse was going to open up. The oil bourse being a commodities uh, trading market for oil that was going to trade oil in euros. Uh, so the timing's very interesting on... And by the way, I say alleged uh, Navy SEALs cut the wires, but uh, if well, you read about it... I remember the whole bourse issue. I mean, that's not a conspiracy theory. Yeah, um, I think a lot of these things um, are just not out in the open. Uh, the mainstream doesn't connect the dots on these things, but if you read the various articles and uh, put them together, it starts to make a sense and form a pattern. Uh, definitely it's about keeping the United States uh, petrodollar strong and avoiding the inevitable flood of inflation with our high uh, debt and trade imbalance. Now, uh, can you think of anything that can be done, uh, you know, there's not much we can do about Washington, but can you think of something that, we're seeing all these successes in Keene where they're, they're tweaking Washington's nose without even leaving town over that armored bearcat issue. Do you think it's something that can be done at the local level, at a town in, in you know, I say here in Nashua, uh, to, to, to deal with this? Absolutely. Uh, you know, my fa one of my favorite state reps is Dan Itza, um, particularly because HCR6, I believe. Um, and, and this is uh, kind of the language of that bill that he proposed to the New Hampshire State House was similar to the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions of uh, Jefferson and Madison, uh, trying to push for states' rights. Uh, states' rights have uh, been tried to be pushed uh, since the founding of this country and are really a safety mechanism to try to enforce constitutionality. If we enforce constitutionality, uh, pushing at a state level for that, uh, we can avoid unconstitutional wars. I don't see the, how, how that could be used. To, I mean, it's so much easier to use that to stop the state from going along with some federal mandate, but I can't see how that could be used to stop the state from, or to stop Washington from going to war. Now, 
this is kind of in the theory area, what I'm about to say, and, and, and I'm not sure if it would legally be possible, because I believe in working within legal frameworks um, to try it. But Oklahoma once uh, had an idea, a couple of legislators, um, to uh, take in the IRS income tax money into the state house before dispersing it back to the treasury and the United States. And uh, the uh, system of direct taxation in the Constitution used to be of this kind of philosophy where the money got aggregated at the state level before being dispersed to DC. Um, in that case, uh, the state has more power to rein in the purse and has more negotiating power. Okay, so it's an indirect thing, but it would have an effect. Yes, I think really... Now, New Hampshire tried to do this too, by the way. Or at least there are some reps that's proposed that, that, that pushed forward a bill that had that provision. And like I said, it's, it's hard to talk about the legal ground. You know, I, for one, from some of my study of the 16th Amendment, don't even think that was really passed. Uh, and, and the other thing about that is when you look at the legal ground, maybe the 16th Amendment doesn't even matter when it comes to the well, That's what the Supreme tax. Court thought. And so, um, you know, it's, it's very confusing, and we need scholars like Dr. Edwin Vieira, perhaps, uh, to look into these kind of things, to architect them. Uh, but, you know, we live in a day and age where a lot of people don't uh, follow law at the cost. Well, how can you? It's impossible. There's too many laws to follow. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really about um, the support of the people when you get down to it, what people will support. And uh, so I hope we build up awareness. Uh, you know, the, I believe at this point, 70, 80% of Americans don't want to be in war anymore. Um, you know, it's a high number uh, percentage wise. So it, it's really about getting together and talking with our neighbors. You were so disconnected at the TV level because they tell us what society thinks and what's normal, but they're totally out of bounds. They're totally abnormal. It's not what society thinks. Uh, you know, Newsweek is pushing war, Fox is pushing war, uh, but it's not what we as Americans want at all. So I think the real solution is to talk amongst each other about solutions and believe that uh, believe in our neighbors and not in this uh, ghost of society that news networks like to make. All right, Greg from Nashville, thank you much. <laughs>